Well, how are we doing, everybody? Thank you guys so much for watching this video update from the summit. If you could do me the awesome favor of sharing this video on your Instagram story, on your Facebook wall, wherever you're watching this on currently, to let this announcement get out to everyone who needs to hear this. We are going to be letting you guys in on some important information here in a minute. But before we jump into those updates, I just want to take time to pray over two different areas of need. The first, as a church, as a body of Christ, as the people of God, as a whole, we need to be praying for the people of Beirut and the people of Lebanon. If you did not see the news yesterday, Lebanon, the capital city of Beirut, was hit with a tragic explosion that affected the lives of thousands. Over 100 people have died and thousands are currently injured and in hospitals. We need to be praying for that country. That country is already going through a lot of crazy amounts of stress, a lot of crazy amounts of decline, and this explosion has wrecked those people. But we as a church, we as the people of God need to lift them up. We have brothers and sisters there who are, who are right there in the thick of it all, ministering to these people. We need to be praying for them. We need to be lifting up this entire nation in our prayers today. Tomorrow, I have asked Katie, my wife, who has spent a total of 12 weeks in Lebanon, to just share her story of what she experienced there, but also just to share in a time of prayer. She's going to lead us in a time of praying for the city of Beirut. So please join us on social media tomorrow as we do that. And please lift them up in your prayers. The second thing I want you to be praying for is that in the next two weeks, all of our college students are leaving home and going back into the college classroom. Some are going for the very first time. Some are returning as upperclassmen. And it's a really weird time to be stepping onto a college campus. You guys know that. You guys know what's going on in our world right now. And it's a lot, it's going to be very different for these people. We need to be lifting up those freshmen, those sophomores, those juniors, those, even the ones going back for their master's degree. Lift them up regularly. Send them a text over the next two weeks. Just letting them know that you are praying for them, that you are thinking of them, and that you are here to value them and to support them. If they need anything, that they can call on you. And, I, you know, my personal opinion, I've always believed this, that those first two weeks of college are so crucial. You really begin to determine who you're going to be those first two weeks. Now that you have freedom, now that you are on your own, no longer are you uh, under mom and dad's roof, you are now in your dorm, you're now in your apartment, wherever you are, and it's now time for you to begin to make decisions that will change and alter the course of your life. And then in those two weeks, my prayer is that those freshmen, those sophomores, everybody are surrounded by godly influences who will support them and continue to fan the flame the gifts that God has given you. So would you join me in praying for Lebanon and join me in praying for our college students over the next couple weeks. I want to take us back to about January. Back in January, we had just come off the Passion Conference, and I was, in a, I was in a position where I was really beginning to ask God, God, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to become? Who do you want us to be as a student ministry of FBCW, who, who fosters environments where kids belong, who, who creates an atmosphere where people love God, love people, and love more people? And I began to, be, I began to pray for a clean slate, almost a, almost a restart, a reset, not knowing that in a couple of weeks we would have this entire shutdown happen. You realize that five months ago, five months ago we gathered in here for the last time on March 1st. March 1st was the last time we were all in this room together. A lot of things have changed over the last five months, but one thing still remains the same. That's the mission of the student ministry of FECW. Our mission is to come alongside you, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, to partner with you as we seek to raise a generation who is in pursuit of the upward call of knowing Christ Jesus and being made like him. That our goal is that every single kid who walks through these doors has an opportunity to be found in Jesus as they hear the story of the gospel and they can be made like him as they experience the life-changing power of the Holy Spirit. That's our goal. That's our mission. And last year, I, I set forth in motion this idea of what would it look like if we impacted 1% of the students in the Middle High Valley. That within 20 miles of this church, there's over 13,000 middle school and high school students. What would it look like if we impacted 1%? That's only 130. I began floating that out there to our student ministry team and to our staff. But God is reminding me over and over again in these last five months that we need to refocus. We need to shift our minds differently. That's still the mission. That's still a goal. We want to impact 
130 kids. And we can do that because in the last two years alone, over 175 kids have walked through these doors, whether for a Sunday night event, for a winter retreat, for a fall retreat, or for a rally. Over 175 kids. And that's our goal still. That's still our mission. But how we do things are going to look different moving forward. God has given us a lot of clarity and a lot of great vision over these last few months. I've been driving, you know, as I was driving the cow and God was giving me, if you've driven a cow and you got three hours, and if you're by yourself, that's three hours of just thinking time. I was just listening to God, listening to what he would have for me, and he started giving me clear direction, clear plans. And to let you in on a secret, two years ago, Tony Foreman, our pastor at church, began, he and I began talking through what would it look like to effectively communicate to the two groups that we have on Sunday nights, the two groups being middle school and high school. And we began asking ourselves the question, are we painting with too broad of a brush? Meaning, are we, are we grouping too big of a, a, a group together? Are we, do we have too many different age groups represented in one group? And in the way we teach, the way we preach, the way we lead, are we painting with too broad of a brush? Are we making generalized statements? Are we having to you know, lower the level of teaching for one group and then speaking over another one's heads? And we began to say, what would it look like if we made a transition to really focus on family ministry? Because FPCW, that's what we want to do. We want to focus on family, family ministry. We want to impact the family. And that's how we believe if we impact the family, the church will be impacted. If, if the family unit is strengthened, the church will be strengthened. And therefore, the, the, cultural, the culture will be strengthened. So we began to ask the question, God, what, what do you want us to do? And so moving forward, starting this September, we are making a change. Our first get-together will be Sunday, September 6th. That's our target date. If things work out, that's when we'll be together once again. And that night, we will meet together for family worship like we do every month. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, everyone is invited to be a part of family worship night. We'll be, we'll be meeting downstairs in the multi-purpose room. We'll have a meal together, and we'll cast the vision for the entire year as we worship together, as we teach and learn together. But starting that night, moving forward, Sunday nights will be for grades 8 through 12. Wednesday nights will be grades 5 through 7. We are splitting up high school, middle school, and you might be thinking, why are we doing that? If I, it would be irresponsible for us as a ministry, as a church, to continue painting with a broad brush. We need to narrow our focus. We need to focus in our teaching and realize the stage of development that each kid is in. We need to stop thinking everybody is exactly the same, stop thinking that they're all in the exact same position of life, and really focus in on that. And so on Sunday nights, we'll gather together, grades 8 through 12. We'll teach. We'll go into life groups. We'll do a lot of things that we've been doing, but look a little bit different. On Wednesday nights, we'll gather together, grades 5 through 7, and really focus in on just the discovery of God, who God is to you, who God is, what, is it, what has he done. Sunday nights will be more about who you are in Jesus. What is God calling you to be? Because in, in high school, you start to begin asking the questions, what do, I, what do I want to do for a career? What do I want to do for life? What do I want to do for college? And God is working within you passions that you need to start realizing what they are and what he's calling you forward to. And then in middle school, you guys are still in this discovery stage. You're still, you're still learning new things. You're still learning a lot of new concepts. And in that, in that period of life, it is so crucial for us to really focus as a church and share with you what God has done, what God is doing for you and through you. So moving forward, the only time we'll all be together is on Sunday nights for, for family worship night once a month and sometimes when we get together for big events. But moving forward, that's how we're going to do ministry at the summit. And we're super excited about it. Our ministry team, you'll see some new faces, you'll see some old faces as we are revamping what it looks like to lead you guys and disciple you all as students. We're really excited for that. Now you might be thinking, how are we going to get together on September 6th with everything that's going on right now? Over the next few weeks, I need you guys to look closely to our social media as throughout that time, we will be putting out our policies and our plans for what it looks like to social distance, what it looks like to check in, what it looks like to come together and worship as a faith family. We're going to be putting that out on social media, so please watch that, please follow that, and please be praying for us as your leaders as we seek God's counsel, as we seek godly counsel, and as we move forward as a ministry. It is very important that you follow us along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, as you see constant uh, updates, constant teaching opportunities. Uh, starting next Monday, we'll begin a new uh, morning devotional time that I'll be leading on Instagram and Facebook. We're going to spend time working through the minor prophets. 
And we'll be spending, it won't be as drawn out as maybe what we did with Hebrews. We'll be more focused in on what each minor prophet, what each story is communicating about God, what's communicating about us, and what's, what's it communicating about the bigger picture of Scripture. I'm really excited to start that next Monday with you guys. That's a lot of information. Pray for Lebanon. Pray for your college students. Join in as we seek godly counsel, as God is preparing for us, preparing for you to come back together again in this space to worship and for you to grow into who God is calling you to be. I am so excited to be where we are right now. That God has given us this opportunity, this opportunity to refocus, this opportunity to revamp, this opportunity to pray over you and reach out to you. In the next few weeks, I want you texting everybody that you know and inviting them to September 6th to that first night at the summit. It'll be family worship, we'll have food, we'll have worship, We'll have a time of teaching and a time of small groups as we get together once again. So please be there on September 6th. And then middle school guys and gals, 5th through 7th grade, be there on September 9th as we kickstart a brand new opportunity specifically for you. I love you guys, and I cannot wait to see what God has in store for you.